Hi everybody, my name is Susan Sechi and I'm an award-winning children's book illustrator. Do you like foxes? Of course you do, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Today we are going to draw these cute guys that you can see on my screen here. But before we do so, let's start with some fox jokes. So, what do you call a fox with a carrot in each ear? Anything you want. They, he cannot hear you. What did the grape say when the fox stood on it? Nothing. It just let out some wine. And finally, when does a fox go moo? When it is learning a new language, of course. But now, let's start drawing. <laughs> the very first step, as usual, was collecting several references of foxes. I chose red foxes, although there are many different species, but I felt like sticking to the red foxes as they are present in several fairy tales and other stories could be sufficient for me. I chose this one to show you how I approach this project. First, just finding the main shapes on the fox and understanding the structure, how the body is built. So I felt um, after understanding the structures, I'm ready for creating my own illustration, children's book illustration fox. But you can see I still follow the same guidelines that, that guided me uh, drawing the realistic uh, animal. So I use the same angles of the body and the shapes are more or less the same. Although, when you can also see, I exaggerate certain parts. For example, the head is much longer, the body is more slender. In general, the shapes are a little bit simplified. And what I try to do here, actually, I try to exaggerate the features I thought are really typical to a fox. It is a little bit like you ask yourself a question, what makes a fox? What are the typical features? What are the typical physical features of a fox? And exaggerate those features. It's a slender body. It's very flexible. You can notice the gracefulness and goofiness if you watch videos with foxes jumping around, hunting, or just crouching in the nature. So I gave my fox longer limbs, a little bit even pointier ears, and slender body. I even decided to give him a longer neck. And of course, we couldn't forget about the long and bushy tail, which is so typical to foxes. After I finished with the blue sketch, I was ready to continue with a more refined version. It is still just a sketch, so I'm still just looking for the main features I would like to give to my fox. And while previously I said, like, I was looking for the main features in general for a fox, if you look at a couple of photos, reference photos of foxes, you will recognize that each of them has their own typical features, how the hair is on them, how the colors, the patches, the pattern on their fur is recognizable. They are individuals. And we can exploit that too. We can also give our fairy tale fox some special features, some specific pattern or different color patches on her fur. The next step is blocking the colors, which means I fill a shape of the fox with some neutral color that will be the part of eventually the whole design. 
Then slowly I go into the details and add more and more small parts that give my fox a little bit more personality. It is important to remember not to add too much detail when you start to work on them. Coloring can be the part of your drawing when you can ruin everything. So what is the right approach then? I think like with the drawing you can go with the step-by-step -step approach. First concentrate on the general look of the character, the bigger shapes, the bigger color patches that you add, and when everything looks right then you can add some little details for example a little hair here and there a little light a little shade the eyes the nose the lines for the mouth or the lines that here sign the limbs of the fox concentrating on the bigger shapes or the bigger patches of color first will guarantee you a better character, a better drawing, a better design. The last touches are very critical to your character design. What I am doing here is checking for and looking for any mistakes, any detail that I didn't notice. So I use the good old trick of flipping my drawing or um, mirroring it horizontally, which helps my brain and eyes to look at the old drawing in new lights and notice design problems or small details that are not on the right place. As a last touch, I also use Photoshop's curves to adjust the colors a little bit on my fox. If you are an illustrator, you can face with the situation when you need to draw a baby animal, but you are unable to find a suitable reference. You might only find reference photos of adult creatures. I imagined this situation and I wanted to show you how you can still use the big fox's photo, or in our case, her illustration as a reference, and recreate it as a young animal. I faithfully followed the pose. I think it's easier to compare them. All the curves and shapes are very, very similar. There are, of course, some differences too. For example, the proportions, the head and the body. The little fox has a big head, a relatively small body. The head's shape is similar to the adult animals, but it is shorter. The forehead is much higher, which is actually a typical feature for human babies too. The nose is less pointy. If you compare the eyes, you will notice that the little critter's eye is around in the middle of the head, while the adult fox's eye is higher. The cop's legs and its tail are a bit shorter too. As I said earlier, foxes have their own individual features, so I decided to give this little guy some light arches of fur over his eyebrow. For the third character, 
I decided to go with a goofy little fox, a toddler having her potty training. I made a very rough thumbnail based on a human kid sitting on the toilet and studied some foxes. I especially studied the heads as ears can be very tricky when there is some foreshortening. I did the thumbnail sketches so my character, even though she is only a cartoonish children's book illustration, could be believable. I always use several helping lines to give me directions and locate things in a three-dimensional space. As you can see, I'm drawing over the different shapes as they were transparent. They make my sketches messy, but I don't mind as eventually they serve their purpose to create a better character. Starting with the large geometric shapes helped me to focus on only on the most important, the readability and the pose. The big shapes compose my drawing. The readability, in other words, an illustration is readable when at first glance you will get what's going on the picture. It helps to clarify things. The pose is also important as it shows my character's personality and mood. As opposed to the first two foxes, where I just concentrated on the character's shapes, basically I wanted to create fox-looking foxes, I take it a bit further here. We almost have a little story. Don't forget to hit the like button, you can subscribe for more videos and follow me on Instagram or visit my website to see more art which is www.brainmonsters.com Thank you for watching!